is to the elite class saying we need to bring Trump down. It's time to rally around our other guys that are our, our establishment guys. And it's kind of interesting to see it playing out there with those two guys who have been fighting or who's going to get the, you know, the yeah, they have there. they have basically let Rubio kind of draft the back of the pack, uh, letting Cruz and Trump uh, duke it out. And then so while the two of them are fighting each other this last week, Rubio is, is kind of uh, coasting behind them and then getting a big boost and a push from Fox News. And, of course, we've seen this happen over and over and over again. Remember that it is Rupert Murdoch who is excited about the fact that uh, he, he would love to see Michael Bloomberg come in. He says, best mayor ever. Oh, yeah, really? the really? guy who's so banning sodas and the assault and the all this biggest, other silly, silly yeah. things. It's completely. The I, biggest I nanny state uh, person you can imagine has nothing but contempt for the Second Amendment, but also contempt for any uh, idea of individual liberty there in, and he doesn't in New York think City. humans are capable of governing themselves yeah. to the point where he doesn't even put salt on the table because you can't even control yourself to not put too much salt on your food. How do you get any more authoritarian than that? And that that is very concerning. He said he would spend a billion dollars to run in a race. Uh, but again, as we were saying before, I really don't think he's going to get in unless uh, there's no establishment candidate. If there's a Rubio or if there is a Hillary and even if there is a Cruz, I'm not so sure that he would get into the race. Definitely, I don't think he would get in. Uh, he said he's not going to get in if Hillary is in it. I don't think he would get in with Rubio. And I even have my doubts about Cruz because, again, I think that they are all, uh, that, that Cruz and Rubio are establishment candidates. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, they are supported by the big establishment donors like Sheldon Adelson. Uh, they are absolutely under the control of the Zionists like Sheldon Adelson. I mean, make that clear. Those guys, there is, is absolutely nothing that they will not subordinate uh, for the cause of uh, a foreign government. And, and right. to me, that is just absolutely traitorous that they would put another country above the interests of our own. But of course, we see that right. happening all the time. Yeah. And like that right there is just shocking to me. But those, the surge after, of course, we had those uh, very high up figures there in the establishment putting out that call to it's time to take out Trump. Yeah, yeah. So, and again, you know, of that. Trump needs to, th this is a, a good time. Trump really needs to double down. He's talked a lot about Cruz's Canadian citizenship. He needs to talk about Rubio being an anchor baby uh, because he's he talked about the anchor baby issue to his credit when he was talking about uh, the border situation and, and so forth. We need to understand what a natural born citizen is. And we need to understand that uh, anybody can file a lawsuit. Donald Trump could file a lawsuit. Somebody here in Texas has already filed a lawsuit against Cruz. Uh, there's been a lawsuit filed, I believe, in Florida against Rubio, mm -hmm. uh, saying that he is not a natural-born citizen. I, I think there's a very, very strong case that neither of them are eligible to run for president, and yet here they are. Right, and, uh, and now weren't you pointing out three. that Rubio's parents weren't citizens because right. they were here in the country, but they weren't citizens yet when he was born. That's right, that's right. He... He was, his citizenship uh, came under the anchor baby understanding, which I don't think is, is correct. And that's, that's a, a broader issue. Uh, they became citizens later. Uh, uh, Cruz was, uh, his mother was an American citizen, but he was born in Canada. His father was a Canadian citizen at the time. And there were even questions as to whether or not his mother had given up her American citizenship because she was on a Canadian voter roll, although they didn't have a record that she had voted up there. So they go door to door. That may have been why she was put on the roll. Uh, because, you know, they, they may have thought it was a, uh, uh, a census or something like that. But nevertheless, uh, his father was not a citizen. He was not born in America. So he has even less credentials than Obama does, if you look at the official story of Obama. And all of these Republicans who were concerned about Obama are not concerned at all about Ted Cruz. A and here's the deal. This guy wants to run on originalists interpreting the Constitution for the Supreme Court. He says, I believe in the Constitution as written. I believe in an originalist interpretation of it, a literal interpretation of it. What did they mean when they wrote the words? Okay, and we're going to go literally by the words. We're not going to go with the living Constitution document. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's the key. He, he wants, that's the hypocrisy that we see again and again with Ted Cruz, you know, flipping his position on issues. So he believes in a literal constitution, he tells the conservatives, except when it comes to his own eligibility to run for president. <laughs> in that case, he wants a living constitution that he can interpret however he wishes, not with what was written at the time and the commentaries and the understanding of what those terms mean. That's a very important thing because 
there's a different understanding today by most people as to what the militia is. But we know exactly what the militia right. means in the Second Amendment. So these terms that were not defined in the Constitution were clearly understood in the auxiliary documents and the debates that they had at the time. And that's one of the things that really concerns me about Cruz is, again, that hypocrisy that I see. Right. And it's interesting that you bring that up about the language because there is such a an effort to redefine words and to change the meaning behind words. Oh, that's the major strategy that they use all the mm -hmm. time. Oh, yeah, that's a... Uh, You'll read something like the Bill of Rights and it'll say and or the or, you know, the, the comma. That's the thing that I was in there at one time. Well, the comma means that this is completely separate than <laughs> what we would interpret it to believe today. It's They come up with all kinds of things. <laughs> well, hey guys, they, I'd like to make a comment about Marco Rubio. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kit. Kit His website's uh, opensecrets.org on mm -hmm. political donations. And this is for the Microsoft Corporation, which is, as we all know, is <laughs> running the software Tonight. Now for uh, Republican candidates, now take a look at this. Look who's at the top for Senate for donations, Marco Rubio. Wow, wow. Yeah, he is, he is the <laughs> darling of big business of the big globalists. Make no doubt about it. Yeah, uh, I think this, this, is, this chart here, I think this might explain why he's surging so well, in the, <laughs> despite the polls that says he wasn't yeah. going to surge quite as well right before the caucus. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Fox News loves them. Rupert Murdoch loves them. Microsoft loves them. They've put their money where their mouth is, and now they put their mouth where their money has been put. Right. And now we see the results of it with Mar with uh, Marco Rubio. Well, and of, and of course, talking about the nanny state, I mean, it seems that Ted Cruz's efforts to harass people there in Iowa to get them out to vote um, must have paid off here. He sent out these uh, these mailers that had, a, they were bright yellow with red on them. It says voting violation. And it's like a, a report card. Get, it would have the person's name on it. And then all of his neighbors that also did not vote. And they all got an F. <laughs> an F in showing up to vote. If you don't show up for that caucus, we're going to put it on your permanent record. Oh, right. yeah. dear. You not, and not all of your neighbors are going to be publicly shamed. <laughs> it's like out of Animal House. Yeah. You know, you're going to be in super secret, double secret probation. So, I mean, is this like <laughs> a foreshadowing of what the incredibly is childish like after? Yeah, incredibly <laughs> childish. But, you know, it's interesting to me that uh, what I see in this race, besides the promotion behind the scenes of Marco Rubio, as, as Kit just pointed out, uh, the, the number one senator that Microsoft uh, puts their money behind, Mm. Uh, the people counting the votes tonight, as well as what Richard Reeves pointed out, how he was being pushed relentlessly by uh, by Fox News, all the mainstream conservative media. Yes. And this last week, right. I, I think he's drafted in underneath uh, the conflict between Cruz and, and Trump fighting with each other. It'll be interesting to see if Cruz sees him as a threat or if, if Trump does and they start coming after him, because certainly Jeb saw him as a as a threat. He, Jeb saw him as taking his place, taking his donors. And that clearly has happened. Uh, Bush is basically out of it, folks. Uh, he's at 3%. Uh, Rand Paul is at 4%. Carson is at 9%. Carson gets one delegate. And uh, Cruz, Trump, and Rubio each get five delegates. Nobody else gets any delegates. Oh, Paul Bush. Six. Uh, was that Cruz? Cruz, Cruz got six. six. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, six. They've, they've moved it up to six. Okay, they've adjusted that now. Okay. Six. So, five, yep. five, one, and then zero. Yep. Nobody else gets anything besides those top four. Right. And Carson just gets one delegate. So. Mm -hmm. And he's probably just there because of the evangelical Christians. Now I wonder where the extra delegate came from because they've had it five, 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 and one for a long time. And then all of a sudden they add a new delegate. Well, I guess they <laughs> may have updated the, uh, <laughs> updated the system here. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But that is CNN. We probably should find a more accurate source <laughs> to take a look at these things. Two plus two is five. Have we uh, heard from Richard Reeves? Is he at the Trump event yet? I'd like to uh, get something from Richard before we go They're off They're setting air. up now. Okay. All right. He did get through the through the security, though, and they're setting up. Uh, let's play something from Dick Cheney about the Clinton email scandal. He says it raises <laughs> some serious questions because, you know, Dick Cheney is Mr. National Security. Right. And if the you're going to let... trustworthy guy in America. In yeah, opinion. exactly. Littered out from under his rock to... But, but, you know, when you look at this, uh, everything is sacrificed on the altar of national security. And if you're going to let Hillary Clinton get away with this because she's a Clinton or because she's powerful and can't be prosecuted, she's too big to jail... Uh, that calls into question uh, all of the things that they're doing to take away our freedoms in the name of national security. Do they really uh, need to do all the things that they're doing if we're just going to take all these things and put them on a 
private server without any protection. They're going to ship around uh, documents and strip off the classifications on them. Remember, they tried to send Thomas Drake to jail because he possessed unclassified documents that were basically uh, just documents that they would use for training on his, uh, on his server. And, of course, they were coming after him. It wasn't really so much a prosecution as it was a persecution, being one of the four NSA whistleblowers that were trying to get people's attention before Ed Snowden. And, of course, most of the candidates here, except for Rand Paul, want to uh, try Snowden as a traitor, they mm -hmm. say, uh, unfortunately. But uh, do we have that report ready, guys? Yeah, let's play that uh, Cheney talking about Clinton's email. I think it's very serious. <clears throat> I've never understood why she had a uh, never talk without separate sneering. server she did in the garage <laughs> or wherever it was. Um, why would you want to do that? Why would you want why to do that? Use the regular system. It's set up there. It's established uh, for everybody. And um, certainly the, the senior officials of the... State Department, the Defense Department, the White House, and so forth are read into all of these. Uh, Why would you want to order a NORAD stand down? You get your clearances. Know, would you want to have two separate <laughs> um, systems? We used to have. Uh, when what we difference there, would it make? Um, it wasn't quite as up to date as it is today in terms of technology, but we had a basket outside the door. Turkey? Where any electronic gear had to go in that basket. Wipe it like a with a cloth? Or whatever it might be. You didn't take it into the room because it could conceivably be. Um, reverse engineered or in some fashion uh, threaten the security of what you were talking about. Oh, yeah. Uh, so basically he's just table. spelling it out that Constantly Clinton should have known better. Something you were aware of all the time. And I don't know she why did. she ever started. Well, I mean, if Nefarious you, this guy wants to talk about knowing time. better, what about knowing yeah. better about yellow cake and all this mm. other stuff that they were yeah. involved in? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But well, I'm not a big fan of, of Dick Cheney, but it's not very hard for anybody. Even Dick mm -hmm. Cheney, I mean, you know, we can talk about the hypocrisy of what he's done. But what he said about that is absolutely true. I mean, that's right. the fundamental issue is that why would you have a, a private server here? What are you trying to hide? See, yeah. her security and the things that she has to hide are more important than national security is really what Hillary Clinton is saying. She's saying my political secrets are more important than national secrets. Uh, the things that could cost people their lives because that was uh, some of the documents that came out before were classified as above top secret because if the information came out, it could cost the lives of some people is what we're told. Now, if none of that is true, then let's just start rolling out this uh, surveillance state and just saying it's just a total fraud right. and it's just arbitrary and it really doesn't matter. Right. Maybe that's maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should just uh, say this is total BS mm. and, and just shut it down. Right. Well, because we are. I'm the all for that. Let's let's maybe yeah. I should vote for Hillary and we could <laughs> shut the whole national security yeah. state down. down. Yeah. Well, that's what the uh, former uh, inspector general that was saying about that this was a premeditated thing with not setting her up an email from day one in order to avoid federal records management, but also pointing out. Of course, out it was premeditated. Was you don't just happen to yeah. stumble into a private email server. Right. I mean, how many people <laughs> do you? How many of us have a private email server? At home, How? especially when we got a job like that, especially when you're the top of the you know, secretary of state. I mean, right. nobody briefed her on what procedures were. Yeah. Or she just didn't care. And hey, How? guys, I got, I got some breaking news. Uh, yeah. Bloomberg is calling the uh, Iowa caucus their St. Ted Cruz wins over Trump. Rubio, they're saying that Rubio came in third, clo closing in on Trump. But what's int really interesting in this article I see is Mike Huckabee has announced that he suspended his campaign. Yeah, Huckabee yeah. had said Surprise. there was only three tickets out, and he's, I don't know, how far down is he? Yeah. <laughs> I think he came in <laughs> He's so far down the list, I don't, even, I don't even remember where I saw him at. It doesn't show unless we scroll a couple of pages. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he's out. He's out. So, I guess that's what, a couple more votes for uh, <laughs> Bush, maybe? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Who knows where they're going to go? Well, you know what? It's interesting, Cut. Uh, Huckabee and Santorum both showed up at the Trump rally, didn't they? Right. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think they those. both knew that they were going to be down at 1% or less in, in the uh, final results. Oh, here we go. Got so, Huckabee, he came in yeah. with 2%. Uh, 2% above Christie and Santorum. Santorum was dead last. Uh, Christie was, one, uh, was next to last, and Huckabee was third from the last. And they all, well, uh, uh, Huckabee and Christie got 2%. Santorum got 1%. Nobody got any delegates out of those three. Yeah, he had said before, if he didn't come in in third place or better, he was going to be out. And it never looked like he was going to come anywhere close yeah. to uh, third place. And, of course, Huckabee won 
back in, when was it, 2008? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. That's yeah. interesting. I looked at just a couple minutes ago, I looked at the past winners for the Republicans, and I think it's, it's only almost about 50-50 as far as how many...